Last year was madness. This year would just be, it would be practical. Um, UVM does have a mobile harvester. Um, I was hoping they were going to bring it today, but they weren't, but it's being used right now, so it's not here. I, but, you know, I work on the weekends and at night. You know, that's what I have to work during the day. Um, so I bought this thing uh, as, as a harvester, and it, it seems to work well. I've only used it from the centennial, so I don't know how it works on the next variety. I'll be finding that out tomorrow. <laughs> you know, but, you know, they actually do have some recommendations for speeds um, for, the, for the different different varieties. And if I you strip the bot, the cones will need to strip off by stripping fingers here, which are basically the same as stripping fingers in any harvester anywhere in the, anywhere in the plant. These are just, a, these, are, uh, these are the standard stripping fingers. This one's a horizontal click. Mark's grabbing some binds. I'll show you how it works. Um, the cones go down this chute into the into the drum there. The cones and the smaller leaves are going to fall down and onto that belt. The, the fans are sucking the um, cones down. I mean, sucking the leaves down against the the belt. There's the fall off the back. The cones are circles. They roll down into the flexion plate. As you can see, we added some extra things like the burlap there and this extra plastic because we found out when me and Mark were doing this for the first time ever, obviously, uh, on Saturday that the cones like to fill up here and fall down into the space in between to get covered with sod. So now they're used to it. So they're underneath there and you see all the cones. But that was wasted product. Um, I also found that this, this is put properly, but this is not steep enough. So I'm going to be using a, a broom to show the cones. They, they fill up down here, but they, they don't make it all the way down. Um, so, but that's not, that's not a big deal. Mark's going to bring it over. We'll figure how this thing works. And it certainly needs a lot of adjustment in terms of you know, the rate of things. So you get this to uh, script well and sort well. Because part of the problem I had last time is that there were a lot of cones in the, in, in the back, which were, you know, went up with, uh, with the leaves. And, you know, I literally found I could just, you know, put two basins here, shove the, the leaves out of the way, put the cones over here, and I could then secondarily harvest them. But the goal is, the less you have to do that, the better, because it's, it's, it's a, a hassle. I mean, the whole point of having the mechanical harvester is that doing it by hand sucks, you know? So, <laughs> that was a bit of a hassle. What was the price of it? 14 grand. 14 grand. Which is why you kind of want this to be a practical thing. Just like it, right now, I'm not going to even break even on the cost of, of, of annual cost. If you look at the numbers there, <laughs> the, the how much was the harvester for? 14 large. How long do you have to return to that? To this? Assuming, I'm, well, assuming I never actually pay off my annual cost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably 10 years. Ten years. years. Do you cover it, including doing all the stuff on the bar? My expected life expectancy and the cost of the barn do not even out. You've been technically practicing medicine for a while. Exactly. At some point, at some point, the cost of doing all this and me are not going to be together. And I'm going to be part. I'm talking to him why he puts that in there for me.